I would like to welcome you all. Please, please feel at home. All you can do is marvel what ORAP USA CF partnership has done to our school. This marriage of development started back in the year 2005 when our country was facing great challenges. The teaching and learning materials that we have been receiving ever since then have gone the long way in keeping our school afloat. As a result, our pass rate has increased from 0% to 32% over the past three years. I can't find ways to thank you guys. All I can say is thank you. We're here packing our 16th container. It seems monumental and extraordinary that we've been able to do this. Let's make another pile over here because we don't know where this is going and I have to still inventory this stuff. But as long as the project's been going, people have supported us, students have helped us. It's a glorious day. Almost all of our loadings for Africa are done by members of local key clubs. Uh, Abraham Lincoln High School Key Club, Brooklyn Tech High School Key Club, and the Midwood High School Key Club. In 1975, two members of the Coney Island Kiwanis Club came to my high school and asked if I would be the advisor to the Key Club. And I quickly agreed and as the advisor to that club for about 26 years before I retired. And it's probably the best thing I, I ever did. During my tenure as the advisor, I also started the club in Midwood and the club in Brooklyn Tech. So I have a very strong relationship with both clubs. So whenever a container is ready to be shipped to Africa, uh, I call up the key clubs. They'll send over about 40 members of their clubs and we'll spend about three hours loading the containers. And it's an incredible experience for the kids loading. They get a sense of what the whole project is about. And they're very proud to be involved in the project. And I'm still a Kiwanis member. I belong to the Mapleton Kiwanis Club. And they also support all our work in Africa. So I've had a 25, 30 year experience with uh, Kiwanis. And I hope I have another 30 years uh, with Kiwanis. It's a great organization. I want you to get a, an appreciation for what all this means. Again, we're sending textbooks, library books, soccer equipment, toys, pencils, pens, just about anything we can get our hands on that will help the kids in these schools. In 2003, my wife and I were invited to a friend's wedding in Zambia. We don't turn down invitations to travel, so we were eager to go. At the same time, my son was doing work in Zimbabwe with an organization called ORAP. And when they came to a wedding in, a, in Lusaka, we invited them to come to Zimbabwe. So after the wedding, we headed down to Zimbabwe and we began to visit their schools. These schools were all rural, far away from any cities, had no electricity, and had no supplies whatsoever. They had no pencils, no pens, no books, they were in tremendous, tremendous need. As we were just discussing our concerns about education and development, we then decided, you know, what could be done. At my school in New York, like many other schools, would throw out thousands and thousands of math books, science books. So we decided that we would go back to America, go to schools, pull out their math books, their science books, have the students bring in their own supplies, their own toys. And it was from that humble discussion that this organization has, has grown uh, to be so big.
I'm very proud of my school, even if it is in the bond, right in the bush, <laughs> but I'm very proud of it. Can you talk about uh, what the school was like before you received these shipments? Ooh, the school had problems. Financially, with no money, parents are not able to pay fees because our income comes from the payment of levies. So parents could not afford to pay the fees so that we could buy stationery, we could buy some balls, we could buy this and that for sporting activities. But this program came to our aid. The library is fully stocked. We've got the books from grade one up to all level. Our library is fully functional. Children get the books to go and read at home. And that helped us to improve our pass rate a bit, especially the English books, the mathematics books. You can see the papers that ah. you sent us. Ah. Teachers are using them to make the charts for the children to read. We have 409 formal students, and then we have got about 54 for the ECT class. Yeah. Say good morning. Good morning. In grade 3, there are 59 students against one teacher, when the actual ratio should be 1 is to 40 at most. But you find that teacher has to make a, a class of 59. So it, it really becomes difficult to give individualized personal learning to the children. And mind you, the state of education in Zimbabwe over the last few years, teachers have not been earning a lot of money and the support, any support that comes either from the community or from other places has been very, uh, sort of goes a long way to enhance education. We try to make their lives a little better. We will send them clothing, we will send them uh, makeup for the women, we send them books for them to read, a radio if we can. We want the teachers to be happy to be at that school. Well, the best part of my job is being inside this classroom, you know, sharing with other people what they know, uh, imparting what they don't know to them. This song is saying, come child of Africa, you've got a caring mother, come child of Africa, you stand on your feet, walk out tall, it got out there. This is our kitchen. Right, this is where we do all the cooking. And one fun thing about our gentlemen, they are the best cookers. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? No, it ain't. <laughs> okay, that's where we wash our dishes. Yes, as you can see, there is no sink. Now moving to the main house. This is the dining, the pantry. The pantry. <laughs> some food, some food stuffs here. Okay, <laughs> so that's where we keep our food uh, in all the other things. Maybe if the weather is not very good outside there, we just come and have our lunch, our breakfast, or our supper in this room. This is my room. My very single bed <laughs> and my very beautiful wardrobe. <laughs> my very beautiful wardrobe there. 
right? And here, the dressing table with a very, very beautiful thing that I received from someone called Brother Andy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I've got something here where I can just do my makeup with. So big thanks to you, Brother Andy. <laughs> Right, so when it's dark, you just go like you light the candle to get light in the room. And besides my Bible, <laughs> so employ this my sister and her family. You just go there once per month to see them, and then we come back here. So most of our time we spend it here. So this is like home for us now. <laughs> this is our toilet and a bathroom. Two in one. It's not tapped, so we just have to go to the bowl, get some water, and then come do the bathing in this place. That motivation, that drive in teachers, it can be very low because if you look where they live, I think that's a challenge that teachers at this school do have. Looking at the community where we are living, most of the people, they are orphans, they are staying with their guidance. Most of them, their parents passed away because of HIV and AIDS. And there are some of the things that people they do, maybe out of ignorance, abusing people. <laughs> The play was all about children's rights. A child was staying with the aunt, and the aunt was very harsh on her, treating her, not giving her enough food, letting her take care of the younger brother uh, who was sick. And the other girl was also an orphan, staying with the uncle. So the uncle was kind of like trying to draw that child close to him by the way of buying her sweets and biscuits. So that child ended up being raped by the uncle. And we see that this child here was being ill-treated by the aunt. And uh, the teacher was the one who ended up sending the message to the parent that uh, if they continue doing so, uh, they might end up being imprisoned. Our kids are prone to abuse. You find somebody in Form 3, that person is supposed to look after the young ones. It's very difficult for an adult to cater for the family, what about a child? They live far from the school. We've got pupils who walk 15 kilometers to school and 50 kilometers back. They have to wake up around 3 a.m. and arrive at school around half past 7. You find out that when they start learning, they are very tired. Woke up at dawn to prepare for school. As I leave home, I will be as a lion, and my stomach will rumbling like a regiment of drums. When I get to school, my fear will be so, and they will be swallow. When I get to school, I will be mentally tired, and that makes learning difficult for me. At the end of the day, I don't pass my exams. For most of them, their parents are maybe farmers, some are unemployed. So um, just getting the money for fees, it's, it's a major challenge for most of the parents. Life is difficult in Zimbabwe. Things have become extinct as beds. Many things like food, clothes and money. Our feet are swollen like ones of an elephant. Thorn bushes are part and parcel of our feet. Some of us are orphans. Education has become a dream this, that is not reachable. We are disappointed very much like a hen who has broken eggs. We are not given clothes, food and medical care. We are treated as donkeys. We feel like a fish which is living in a river where water has been finished. In Zimbabwe, we rely upon farming. They don't have the time to farm. If there are two at home, one will be absent Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday is the other one because they have to do the farming. Life is very good at school because at break time, I play many games like soccer, netball, basketball, and volleyball. When I go to home, I am not happy because I will be I'll be cleaning at home and watering the garden. 
I think at school is better than at home because I will be playing with my friends at school. I will be enjoying myself. There are no seven seas. We are in this world together. And uh, poverty in one community is poverty for us all. I am very grateful that we have brave and kind communities going across seas to assist children that need books, that need equipment. This program is very important. I also want to appreciate those groups that have sent uh, sporting kits. The sporting equipment, yeah, the balls, the boots. Even now when I talk, my team excelled well. They are proceeding to the provincial competitions. One of the things that USACF does is we bring soccer coaches uh, to Zimbabwe every July. Lots of running, lots of scoring. What else do we want to do? I can see you're all doing it right now. We're smiling. Okay, we're having fun. Soccer is all about fun. So in 2010, we took a trip to the schools which partner with ORAP and USACF. The kids felt so honored that we'd come all the way from America to teach them soccer for three to four days in their schools. And they were so welcoming and so proud to have us there. We really love super soccer stars because they come with the right philosophy, they want the kids to have fun, and they teach skills to the students. Wait for the whistle, ready, set, let's go. But the big thing is that having a soccer program and bringing soccer balls and soccer uniforms changes the lives of these kids. A lot of these kids will come to school just so that they can play soccer. We brought with us 80 soccer balls, about 200 t-shirts, bunch of goal nets and the classes ran so smoothly even though there was a language barrier we were still able to communicate with them through the language of soccer. One of the best parts of the trip was working with the teachers themselves to teach them some of our coaching education ideas so they're able to then give the same classes when we're not there. It's changing everything, it's changing the whole complexion of the schools, and it's very, very exciting. For me, having the opportunity to go to a far-reach place such as Zimbabwe and continue what we do here is the most rewarding experience. It's why I do what I do. The other project that we're really proud of is the furniture repair project led by Andy Hughes. His work has totally transformed classrooms, schools, and communities. Five years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Zimbabwe. When I arrived, Moyo, who was our local ORAP representative, said to me, Andy, you know, we love getting all the books, but the fact of the matter is that the kids just don't have any school furniture and no place to sit and read their books. <laughs> The wood that we are loading, this is a new project. Andy, uh, yeah. over there, 
He went with us this year to Zimbabwe, and we bought seat forms, lumber, we bought uh, desks, tools, and in two days we repaired about 175 pieces of furniture. It went so well that we've decided that this is going to be an ongoing project. My speech will be incomplete if I do not speak of the newly found best friend of Tulucha Primary School, Mr. Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are a revelation and a source of inspiration to us. In a short space of time, we have known you, you have transformed Tulucha Primary School to be one of the most resourced schools in Bubi District. As you can see, all the chairs that are here is because of the work of Mr. Andrew. We were assisted by volunteers from the local villages, parents, students, teachers. learning how to vanish and pretty soon I'll be teaching youth how to do carpentry and how to do school tests. I'm a quick learner <laughs> if I'll pass it on to my students. Of great importance to note is the inspiration that the community have drawn from this partnership. The schools now they are motivated after and it left and we had left, they called us back, they, 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 they did the, the repairs on their own. Thus far we've probably completed about 2,000 pieces of furniture, but this is just a drop in the bucket. There are many more students to get into a desk. It is very difficult to be smart, and a lot of these kids are smart to learn if there's nothing in the room. I'm teaching science. This is the only book that I have. It's only me that I've got this book. So when we get a set of biology books and we can give it to a whole class, they're in heaven. We try to talk to schools, find out what is it that they need, and then when you do ship those materials, we're responding to a, a need on the ground. In the kindergarten that we left this, there was nothing. There weren't even enough desks for all the kids. And we left this box of toys there, we didn't think too much about it. Came back about six months later, and instead of there being 20 kids in the class, there were 60 kids. Solely because we filled one box with toys. I believe that all of you could fill one box. Even those who had actually withdrawn from school, they have come back. The clothes, the shoes, the toys we distributed to them. They feel very excited and then they feel like coming to school. Some shoes have been donated. It's really making a difference, especially in cold weather. You can imagine you coming to school and it's on the floor, you're on barefoot, you're trying to concentrate. Some used to fail to produce uh, pens, just a pen. A parent could not even afford to buy a pen for the child. But now, I, we think everything is in place. You can change people's lives. And in a lot of cases, fairly dramatically by doing very simple things. Bring in a pair of shoes. Somebody can walk to school. Bring in a notebook and a pencil. What has touched a lot of us is that the containers that come, they will be coming from different communities. School children donating their own pencils and their own books to children here. It's something that's really touching me, that people from so far away just come to think of, let's just go to Africa. No, to Zimbabwe, to this district, and maybe particularly to this school. We are so much honored. We are very grateful of the program. We are very grateful of your assistance. We just want to see these people growing up and be better people. And maybe when one grows up, maybe she or you be a doctor and remember where he or she came from. But, you know, I'm here because of the books that were sent to our schools. So we are really grateful for the help that you're giving us and it's a very big thank you to you guys. <laughs>